So I'm very uh, fortunate to be speaking with uh, Professor J. Michael uh, Bailey, a professor at Northwestern University in Evanston, uh, Illinois, suburb of Chicago. And um, I've been doing these podcasts uh, and, you know, either on my own or with uh, guests where I've been really promoting this notion of critical thinking and trying to um, encourage more people to look for difficult uh, answers uh, to questions that we don't know, you know, we don't know the answers to and that we need to be able to use scientific inquiry to find out more about the human condition and even if it might um, rustle some feathers and might upset some people, it might not be politically correct uh, in some people's minds, if we don't have the answers, we need to look for them in the proper way. We can't let ideology drive us. We need to let the science uh, inform um, you know, our thinking about these matters. And so, uh, Professor Bailey, um, you are, I think, at the vanguard uh, when it comes to these types of issues. You've been involved in a number of controversies due to the nature of your work. And I'd like to talk to you about uh, those experiences and you know, learn more about um, what you do, why you do it, and what you found. Um, as I mentioned uh, before, you, you're in my lectures. Uh, you kind of hit the trifecta okay, when it comes to uh, controversy. You know, with, um, uh, the, I, I deal with the three main issues uh, that I think have got you into trouble. Actually, I throw in a fourth that you did later on. We can discuss that. Um, but, you know, I, I try to present a fair uh, and balanced uh, perspective on what happened with you. Um, but I thought, you know, what better way to find out about uh, your experiences and the work that you were doing, I think, which is very important work, than to speak with the man himself. So uh, thank you very much for, uh, for you know, allowing me to speak with you. Well, thank you for doing this kind of thing. Uh, you know, I, I think we are in a moment where we need people uh, to think critically. <laughs> These days, it's becoming more and more, uh, I would say, prevalent where uh, people are being lambasted. They're, you know, being suspended, losing their jobs, you know, getting in trouble in any so many different ways for speaking about what, you know, they may be controversial matters, but they are far from unequivocal. Uh, you know, we, we don't. The science isn't in on these issues. We need to know more about them. And your trouble started quite a few years ago when you were doing that very thing. Uh, right, and you know, and, and people were in, impugning your motives. They were, you know, at the very least, they were questioning them, which I think is fair. I think it's always fair to question one's motives. But they, you know, I, I saw them make a lot of assumptions about who you were, what you were doing, right, and why you were doing it. So, can you maybe speak a little bit about that? I mean, just maybe give a bit of background. Like, where where did the controversies first begin with you? I suspect you're referring to the controversy with about my book, uh, but I you know, should say there were controversies before then, including uh, very uh, visible uh, controversies. So let's go back. So my book controversy uh, was began in 2003 uh, when my book was published. But a year before then, um, I had uh, become a poster child uh, for government waste uh, based upon social conservative attack on uh, my research on sexual arousal in men and women. Right. Um, so um, we had a small grant, and that's the title of the grant, small grant, which uh, in the United States uh, at the time was uh, $50,000 a year for two years. Uh, to study the relation between sexual arousal patterns um, and sexual orientation in men and women. And uh, we've shown, I think, very uh, clearly and replicably that men, uh, their men's sexual arousal patterns is closely linked to their sexual orientation, where straight men get much more sexually aroused to female than to male erotica and uh, women um, and, and gay men show the opposite pattern. Women, in contrast, really barely show any relation between their uh, uh, arousal patterns and their sexual orientation. And uh, now, erotica is uh, has a synonym, uh, pornography. That's what we use in the lab and. 
We had to measure genital responses. A conservative reporter called me up and uh, acted scientifically interested and then said, you know, I think it's right that you're spending government money to show when, to find out what kind of porn women like, which is, you know, uh, a very uncharitable and inaccurate uh, interpretation of what we were up to. The, the research that we uh, did, I'm quite proud of. It's been very influential uh, scientifically. I think it's uh, important in elucidating differences between men and women in their sexual orientation. But anyway, the, the conservative article published in the Washington Times, um, you know, it just went viral. And my picture was, you know, shown on Bill Bill O'Reilly and all the other uh, uh, conservative talk shows. And, you know, I, did, I uh, didn't go on any of these. There's the penile plethysmograph. Uh, and there's the vaginal photoplethysmograph, right. uh, but they work very differently. Yeah, they're they're both attached to the genitals, and we they're both uh, in both cases we're showing very explicit sexual stimuli to men and women, and to see how they respond. Right, and instead of just getting self-report, where people can be uh, influenced by social desirability uh, to answer one way or another, you're getting their actual physiological arousal to these stimuli. And um, and I know with the, uh, with the penile uh, plethysmograph, there are different versions, the strain gauge being the most, uh, I think, common or the easiest one to right. use, right? Right. Right. So, um, yes. so the question that people would ask is, uh, you know, what is the value of doing this kind of research? And what would you say to them? I think that if one wants to understand uh, sexual interests, and sexual orientation in particular, uh, there's great value uh, because, you know, what people say in their self-report is not always uh, accurate. I also think that uh, sexual orientation, at least in men, is precisely a matter of sexual arousal patterns to men or to women. And, you know, you can't really understand it <laughs> if you're not going to talk about sexual arousal. I suppose people can challenge, well, why should we understand sexual orientation? Uh, and, you know, somebody pushes far enough, I'll say, okay, well, if you don't want to, that's fine. Uh, but most people find it very interesting. Uh, and, uh, you know, sexual orientation has been a controversial trait. Uh, and, uh, you know, in my view, uh, controversial things are exactly where we should uh, put scientists to uh, try to under, help us understand. You know, the home of many scientists is universities, and as we know, in the last number of years, um, you know, you're you're not the poster child these days, okay? But we know these days that there are many um, professors who are uh, being excoriated for, for for saying things that I don't think are that controversial, uh, and even if they are controversial, it's not improper or even offensive to raise the questions. What I find offensive is when people drive their own ideology down the students' throats and present it as fact. That's what I think is offensive. I couldn't agree with you more.